Okay. So today we're going to focus on something that a lot of you guys and your friends or your friends are dealing with. And we're going to talk a lot about anxiety today. <laughs> so I know for a fact that a bunch of y'all in here have had your own experience with this before. And maybe you have it. We're going to talk about what that is in just a second. But first, we need to go ahead and get our bodies right and our mind right. So I need you to take your shoulders, bring them back and down. We're sitting up nice and straight. Hands can be just resting in the lap. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of a belly breathing and a heart breathing. So you've got your hands, right? You can either put your hand on your heart and you can put the other hand on top, or you can put them both on your belly. Or you can do one of each, or let's say you don't like either one of those. You can just rest your hands in your lap. Okay. So pick one that works for you. I like the feeling of having my hands on my heart because I think it feels really nice to have that pressure on my chest. It's calming to me. You may like it on your belly. Why do we put it on our belly? Well, it's because if you're breathing nice and deep, you can feel your belly expand. If you're breathing really shallow, your belly's not going to move. But if you breathe deep, you'll feel the air moving your diaphragm, okay? Let's say you don't like either of those. Totally fine. You can just rest your hands in your lap, palms up or down, okay? So there's lots of choices. Find the one that feels good to you right now today. I'm going to do this right here. And what we're going to do is you're going to breathe with me. And we're going to take some nice deep breaths in and out. So I'll wait till everybody's eyes are up here. Perfect. Let's take a nice deep breath in. Feel your hands moving if you've got them on your chest or belly. And then exhale, same thing. Let's do that again. Nice deep breath in. Fill it up all the way. And release. Again, you should feel movement in your chest or in your belly because you're breathing nice and deep. Let's try that again. Breathing in and out. Last one. Deepest breath you've taken all day. Here we go. Inhale. And exhale. Beautiful. Now I want you to take your hands like this. Okay, so you got your hands like this. This is one I think I've done with you guys before. Maybe I have, maybe I have not. It's called hot soup. So right here, I want you to imagine that you've got a hot bowl of some sort of soup that you like, okay? It can be chili. It can be chicken noodle. It can be um, whatever kind of soup that you enjoy. Vegetable soup. You have a question? Corn soup? Absolutely. Whatever you like, okay? So you've got your soup, chili, whatever. Think about a soup right now. Think about soup right now. Vegetables good, Italian wedding. Like I said, good old classic chicken noodles, pretty good. Here's how this goes. And you need to be sitting up. You need to be sitting up. You're going to inhale, and I want you to imagine you're smelling the soup. And really try to imagine what it smells like. And then exhale, you're going to cool off the soup. The soup's a little hot. Okay? You know what kind of soup I really like? At Japanese restaurants, hibachi restaurants, the chicken broth soup. Oh, that so stuff good. is my jam. I <laughs> love that stuff. I'm going to imagine that soup today. You got a soup you want to tell me about? I don't like soup. Okay, so here's another option for you. That's a great point. What if I don't like soup? Think about hot chocolate. You can imagine a big cup of hot chocolate or coffee or tea or just some sort of hot mm -hmm. something, okay? So come back this way. Let me see your hands. Wait, so after we do the bowl, like, how do we do it if we did like then you just imagine you're holding a big mug of it okay so it's like a big fancy ceramic mug all right here we go ready um wait so everybody's looking up this way perfect all right breathe in take a deep whiff imagine really smelling it what that might smell like and now exhale pulling it off ready same thing inhale imagine now a good taste of it mm and exhale, cool it off. Last one, imagine how good it makes you feel to eat something so delicious, how at home and peaceful you feel, and then exhale. We're, calm, we're calming it down, we're cooling it off, is what I'm trying to say. Perfect, all right. Come back this way, I need to talk to you about something important, and I feel like you guys are gonna have a lot to say about this, okay? So I love getting your comments, okay? But wait until, I tell you it's time, all right? So today we're talking about something called anxiety. I will go ahead and tell you, when I was a teenager, this was something I really struggled with, but I didn't really know what it was called, okay? I knew that I felt nervous. I knew that I felt really overwhelmed very easily. 
And I knew that um, I always had this feeling like something bad was going to happen. That was kind of how my anxiety showed up for me. Not everybody's anxiety was the same. It also affected my body. It made my stomach feel really upset sometimes when I got really nervous. It made me feel like I didn't want to eat when I was nervous. I had no appetite. It also made my heart race when I was feeling really upset. So anxiety is a real thing. And it's something that affects not only your thoughts, but it can also affect your body and it can show up in your body some way. A lot of people with anxiety will feel it in their jaw. They'll feel this because they clench their teeth or they'll feel it in their shoulders because they're really tense all the time. So there's a lot of ways this shows up. But first, what is anxiety? And I know Sharon's going to talk a little about this today. I don't want to spend too much time. What is anxiety? What do you think anxiety is? State of being worried. Yes, perfect. As a, a state of being worried. And that can be about a specific thing. Like I'm really worried about my presentation on Friday. Or it could be, I just feel worried. I don't really know why. I just have a feeling that something bad's going to happen. I just, you know, I feel very overwhelmed. Um, and so it doesn't have to be about something specific. It can be just like, in general, you feel worried. So, and she's going to talk about it today too. Here are some things that you might hear in your head if you're feeling anxious. Let me also say, everybody feels this at some point. Everybody feels anxiety. For some people, they may almost never feel it. They may only really feel it the day that maybe um, they got pulled over for a speeding ticket and then they see the cop behind them and then they feel really anxious. That might be the only time in their life they feel like that. Or maybe the only time in their life is when they are applying for a job and going for an interview. They might have some anxiety. That might be the only time, but they still feel it. Some people feel this almost every day or every day. So, and everywhere in between. So people feel it sometimes, a lot, comes and goes. So everybody will feel this at some point in their life. Um, some people feel it rare. Some people feel it all the time. I don't know how often you might feel it. You might be one of those people who never feels it. You might be somebody who feels this a lot. Here's some thoughts that might enter your mind if you're feeling anxious. This is the end of the world. Is it going to be like forever? It's going to be like this forever, isn't it? I'm a failure. They didn't say hi, so they hate me. If I mess this up, everything will be ruined. I'm running out of time. They're talking about me. I'm going to mess up. Something bad's going to happen. Is everyone hanging out without me? I know what they're thinking. They're thinking blah, blah, blah. This is how anxiety can kind of present sometimes. Or I don't like the way I look. I don't think those people actually like me. Everyone else has friends and I don't. You know, like, oh, there's all these things. It's like anxiety is a really bad liar. But it's a, it's a good liar and a bad liar. It's a bad liar because it really is a liar. It's telling you something that's not true. But the way that it's sneaky is that it's hard to disprove it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're not in that person's head. So you don't actually know what they're thinking. What if they are thinking that? You don't know. But also, they're probably not thinking that. So anxiety is fear-based. When you're looking at the emotion wheel over here, I have an emotion wheel. Um, it's in the category of fear, okay? Anxious, fear. Fear is something that with our ancestors back in the day, anxiety helped them out. Let me give you an example. Let's say there are two cavemen walking down the street. Well, it wouldn't be a street. Walking down the path, Ugg and Glug, okay? So one was named Ugg, one was named Glug, right? Ugg, they both come upon a shape in front of them in the woods. Ugg walks up to the shape or sees the shape and thinks, oh my gosh, it's a saber tooth tiger. I gotta run. And his fight or flight reflex is activated. Glug sees the shape and goes, it kind of looks like a cool rock. What happens if it's a rock? Like, let's say Glug is right. What happens if it's a rock? Well, then Glug thinks it's a rock. It is a rock and he moves on. Ugg gets a little bit nervous, but then realizes he's wrong and he's fine. What happens if it's actually a saber tooth tiger? Ugg saw it and thought it was a saber tooth tiger and is ready to run or fight. Glug is now suddenly unprepared. His body, his brain did not prepare him for a threat because he didn't perceive it as a threat. He thought it was a rock. So what's going to happen? Yeah, Glug's not as ready. And so Glug's going to go, oh my gosh, it's actually a saber tooth tiger. Meanwhile, Ugg's already halfway up the trail because he started running. You know what I'm saying? So what this did when we felt anxious is it helped us to survive. Our ancestors who laid awake at night in their caves and thought about, what if we run out of water? What if our village gets sick again? What if the other tribe attacks us? What if we don't have enough food for the winter? The ones that had anxiety were the ones that kept people alive because they were sitting there going, okay, I have to make a plan. I got to figure this out. The ones who were content 
they didn't pass on those genes to their children and their children and their children and their children. So anxiety actually helped our ancestors to survive, right? Because it kept us alive. Here's what you need to know about your brain. Your brain, its job is not to make you happy. That's not the job of your brain. What do you think the number one job of your brain is? Keep you alive. Keep you alive. 100%. This is how it thinks it needs to keep you alive. Unfortunately, thank you brain, but no thank you because we don't need to sit and think like this all the time anymore. I don't need to worry about encountering a saber toothed tiger on my way to school. I don't need to worry about encountering a warring tribal gang of people who are going to attack me while I'm going in the grocery store. But your brain is still hardwired to try to keep you alive. That's the whole thing. So there's nothing wrong with your brain if you're like, I feel like I can't break out of this. Well. We need to find some help for that, but also know that your brain's just trying to do its job, right? It's trying to keep you alive. It's not trying to keep you happy. So everybody experiences anxiety. Sometimes your anxiety level can be affected by your genetics. So if you have a lot of anxious people in your family, that might be something you've inherited. That doesn't mean you will be anxious, but you might have a tendency towards it, okay? So if you have a lot of anxious folks in your family, it's likely that their children might also have some anxious stuff going on, right? Um, or trauma. Trauma is like when something really, really bad happens and you saw it happen or it happened to you or it happened to someone you love. That is like just a really, really big deal. That can trigger it and make it kind of pop up. So if you've never had an issue with this before, but suddenly you're in a terrible car wreck, you might be anxious all of a sudden every time you get in a car. Or you might be having dreams at night that you're in a car. It's your brain trying to keep you alive. It's trying to keep you from having that happen again. But thank you, brain. I don't need you to do that so bad though. I don't need you to do that so hard, right? Anxiety is a liar. It keeps us in this fight, flight, freeze state. Fight, flight, freeze is really great for moments when we're trying to stay alive, but we don't need to stay in fight, flight, freeze, right? That keeps us hyper aroused is what it's called versus like at this nice medium. What your brain wants to do besides keep you alive is stay in medium. It doesn't want to stay in happiness mode. It doesn't want to stay in sad mode. It wants to stay right in between. That's what your brain's trying to go for. But when you're feeling anxiety all the time, you're in this like <laughs> hyper mode all the time because you're hyper vigilant. You know what hyper vigilant means? What does it mean to be I'm hyper vigilant? You're always scared of being hyper. Okay, not hyper. You are kind of worked up. What were you saying? I was going to say I was hyper. Not hyper. Hyper vigilant means too much of watching out for something. So if you're always thinking that something's about to happen, you're always looking over your shoulder, you're being hyper vigilant. And if we stay hyper vigilant, what do you think that does to your brain if you're constantly on edge, constantly looking for something? What do you think that does to your brain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, worried sometimes over nothing. Yeah, so it makes you worried over nothing because your brain can't determine what's a real threat and what's not. Um, it also will make you so tired because your brain is using all this brain power for constantly being aware of stuff. It also makes you really jumpy. People who are like, ah, turn that off. I can't, I'm overstimulated. I don't. Or they might lash out because sometimes anxiety looks like anger. Sometimes when you're feeling really stressed and you're really worried, it comes out aggressively. Like, can you please turn that off? I'm so sick of listening to that song. But what's actually going on is that you're anxious and you're overstimulated and you're feeling super vigilant and you've been having that all day long. And one more thing's going to send you over the edge. And so it comes out like you're mad. What's actually going on is you're scared, is you're anxious. Hi. Honestly, like almost like every single day, like I um when I get home <clears throat> and then like my sister just like walks into my room and like like okay, she wears like like outfits of, like She's like 15 when she like wears like pop tops every single Okay, so she and stuff, yeah. and it's like really annoying for me. And like sometimes like whenever she even like just like does anything, like she likes um she has like a husky, so sometimes she'll like you know like the husky like howl and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like really annoying for me. So mm -hmm. sometimes I'll like um like yell at her. Like lash out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's this, sometimes it's actually anger. We'll talk about anger later. But you know, it's, it's just paying attention to like, am I lashing out because I'm actually worried, or am I lashing out because I'm on edge? Um, anxiety can help us, not in a great way, but if you're a really anxious person about your grades, let's say anxiety is telling you, I'm going to fail. Mm -hmm. If I don't get a good job, then I'm going to die. And if I don't have good grades, I won't get a good job. So I have to get perfect grades. Or if I don't get good grades, my parents are going to disown me. 
And so anxiety keeps you in this state of like, I have to make good grades. I have to make good grades. I have to make good grades. I've got to study. I've got to do well. I've got to make do well. Like, you know, and so what that does is that serves you. It makes you a really good student, right? Like an anxious kid who's been driven crazy about their grades probably looks like a really good student on paper, but what's going on inside? They're falling apart. They're emotionally wrecked. Negativity bias is the thing that means when I was talking about Ugg and Glug and how when we see something, we immediately assume it's something dangerous. That's called negativity bias. What it means is that your brain is made to look for the worst in something, right? So also, can I have everybody sit up for me, please? Thank you. Um, your brain is trained to look for the, the worst in something. Why? Why would your brain, I just said this a second ago, why would your brain be trained to look for something scary that's not actually there? Yeah. To keep you alive. Yes, keep you alive. And also think about how you have days, right? And maybe your day, you've got 24 hours in a day and maybe you're awake for 16 of those hours. Maybe almost everything during your day went okay or even good. But one person said one, maybe not kind thing to you. You might go home and say, I had a terrible day because this person said this thing to me. You want to know why? Negativity bias. Your brain stays with the bad stuff instead of looking for the good stuff because it's trying to keep you alive. And that person saying an unkind thing to you, your brain perceived it as a threat. And so it said, I need to stay with that and make that not happen. They're called sticky thoughts. Your brain likes to stay with the bad to keep you alive and forget about all that other all the other 15 and a half hours that you were awake during the day when good stuff happened or neutral stuff happened it's like your brain forgets it and wants to stay with the sticky stuff the negative stuff here's the good news you can train your brain to stay on the good stuff you don't have to stay with a brain that only thinks about the bad but it takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of mindfulness to retrain your brain to look for the good stuff and stay with the good stuff. Why do you think I ask you about your glimmers instead of your triggers? Because that's how we train our brain to pay attention to the good stuff, right? That's why. So do you have a thought? No, I was just kind of You're just answering. answering. Thank you. Yes. Do you have a thought? Go for it. Yeah, but what happens if you train your brain to do positive stuff, but not think about the negative stuff? What's going to happen? I would be really surprised if your brain totally forgot about the negative stuff. Your brain is so hardwired to keep you alive that it's going to do its job when it's time right? It's going to keep you alive. It's going to focus on the negative when it needs to. But if you start training your brain to look for good, it's going to provide more of that medium balance, right? Instead of staying in the negative, it's going to bring you back down to where it wants to be, which is that like homeostasis, that medium. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you very quickly. One of my favorite exercises for when I feel anxious, I do this in real life. Okay. I have a lot of situations where I feel really worked up and I feel really anxious, especially at the dentist. I told you all this before. I have a big dental phobia, right? I don't like going to the dentist. So here is something that you can do right now today when you feel anxious again. And I know some of you guys are going to feel anxious soon because we all do. So think about this the next time you feel anxious. Number one, right here, right now, look around this room. Or if you're watching later, you can look around the room you're in or you can see something I'm in. Pick an object, don't go anywhere, just look at the object with your eyes right now. Any object can be a sign, it can be a sticker, it can be an object, it can be something high, low. Don't look at a person, look at an object, okay? You got five seconds to find something. All right, this could be tricky, but I want you to pay attention to that object with all of your might. I want you to notice that object like you've never seen it before. Study it like if I had to tell you to describe every tiny detail about it, you could give it to me. Now, very quickly, I want you to try to find another object, something different. You got five seconds, find something else. Now, notice that object with all of your might the shape of it, the color, every tiny detail that you could get it down from memory if there was a room with a thousand of these in there you could find this very one 
because you know it so well. And once again, you've got five seconds to find a third object, something different from the other two. Don't care, don't overthink it. Perfect, all right, same thing. Study it with all your might. Your entire brain is on that object right now. Notice the shape, notice the color. the smallest detail. Next, I need you to focus. We're using our senses, right? The senses are the gateway to the present. This is how we bring ourselves back down when we're feeling anxious. We are grounding ourselves right now. It means we're bringing ourselves back down to earth and we do that with our senses. We just use our sense of sight. Now, use your sense of hearing. I want you to notice any sound in the room right now that you can hear. Don't make any sound, just notice the sounds that's already there. Put your whole attention on that sound. Now, I want you to take your fingers and I want you to rub the two fingers or your fingers like this with your thumb and rub them outside your ear. Put all of your attention on the sound of your fingers rubbing together. Like this right here. Beautiful. That was our sense of hearing. Next sense of touch. Don't touch anybody. Please find something near you that's not a person. It can be your own pant clothes. It can be a necklace you're wearing. It can be the carpet next to you, but find an object near you. I'm going to use my jeans that I'm wearing today. And I just want you to feel it with your hand. Notice the texture of the object. Notice the temperature of the object. Put all of your attention on what it, what that object feels like, like you've never felt it before. Beautiful. Bring your attention back here, please. We're basically done. But I wanted to say that's one of my favorite ones for anxiety. If you ever feel anxious and you're feeling anxiety and you feel yourself getting like it's too much, like sometimes it just feels like it's too much and you just can't get out of your own head. Please try that exercise. Three things you see, two things you hear, one thing you can touch. I use it myself. Okay. I'm not going to sell you something I don't believe in, right? This is something that I use when I feel anxious and it helps me, keeps me from, it distracts me away from the thoughts that are kind of spinning around in my head, but it also brings me back to planet earth. I'm engaged in the present moment. It's mindful. I'm now suddenly, oh, here I am. I'm back in this room. I'm listening to these sounds. I'm feeling my own hands. I'm feeling that it just, something about that really helps to bring us from flying away with our thoughts into what's going on right now. So give it a try next time. And uh, that was my big spiel on anxiety. We're not going to review this again, but we are going to talk more about anxiety and how actually to use skills in mindfulness to cope with anxiety sometimes. Okay. Awesome.